Hi, this is Shadi. Today we are going to be discussing Katame no Kata. So it is a Kata or form from the 1880s. It started to develop in 1884 and finished in 1885. So this is how long ago this thing is. Now, uh, it's not just about uh, performing the grappling technique. It holds so much more uh, principles and it's very invisible to someone who is just watching and not realizing it however we are fortunate enough that the Kodokan has produced this DVD long ago explaining everything so I'm not gonna go through it all it's very long but uh, you can go watch it for yourself and you can see that it holds just way too many principles that we reinvent the wheel and think we're doing something so Let's start uh, with this uh, technique, the scarf hold, as a lot of people call it, Kesa Gatame, and uh, it's not just about performing the technique and passing the exam, but rather here you see the uke squirming and then later taps to stop. Now, this is something I've noticed a lot is that the magic of the kata is all in the uke. So, Let's take a look at it from a different angle. It looks like he's trying to escape and just squirming. However, uh, he goes from one escape that it doesn't work to the other that it also doesn't work. And then finally he gives up and taps. So you have a dynamic that's going on between the two. You have one who's trying to execute certain forms of escape while the other is performing the maintenance of the position. And that is key. So like I always say, you know, especially when it comes to grappling techniques, defense is far more important to learn than offense because if you don't have defense, you cannot attack properly. So the first one is you go as you roll and they hold up to their own thigh or belt. But if the arm gets uh, loose, they can tap to this arm lock here. Now they post their leg and create a tripod and then they turn away, They sh you shrimp and try to insert the knee, so the knee shield and grabbing the belt. So classic guard recovery, again, 1884. And here he's holding the belt. So the third one, so if the second escape doesn't work, the third one is being the turnover from the belt and the pants grip. And uh, usually you create a tripod to uh, maintain it. Now. Also, another pin that uh, stood out to me is the shoulder hold or the kata gatame. And they show you that the knee should be on the belt level to prevent any escape. So again, they're teaching you pin maintenance. They're teaching you pin escapes. All of this within this kata where you just look like you're performing the pin. Uh, these are great. I know black belts that cannot uh, do proper escapes for something very basic and it really is a shame we have so many things readily available yet we do not explore them so this rollover here um, is when someone does not uh, follow up like posting and creating the tripod uh, you can roll over by also pushing on the head with your elbow and your fist and uh, rolling over with the shoulder now so here you see it you turn away and then also try to insert the knee and then trying to roll over but you can't and then finally tapping out all pins have the similar structure so here you see for example there are other methods of escaping obviously for kata kesagatame katagatame etc uh, mifune documented so many of them here you see the shoulder hold where he uh, hips he bridges and then rolls on the shoulder that is free and then from there pulls out the arm and executes a, an arm lock. So again, uh, people say it's just for show, it's just to pass exams. I highly disagree. You, they teach you how to enter for a throw, how to grip, uh, how to execute a technique. And here you can see from the grappling uh, how to also escape. So the arm lock, basic juji gatame. They show you what we call the hitchhiker escape and um, also 
as you learn how to execute it, not just the escape, but everything from thumb up, uh, block the ribs to prevent them from turning towards you. And here you see, it, you actually rotate the arm, you take it a little bit to your side. That's why they tap and they cannot do the uh, hitchhiker uh, escape. The, the, uh, the arm is slightly taken to the side where the lock is accentu accentuated. Here you see Mifune doing an escape uh, like the hitchhiker, but differently where the both legs are up. Now here, one leg is over the head only. So what he does is roll over before the arm is straightened and also triangle choke escapes. So as Kashiwazaki says, when you can escape and defend, then you are truly unstoppable. That's why he took every fight to the ground because he knows that if they try to do something, he has his way around it. Also, this defense to Ashi Garami. Granted, it's not legal anymore. But again, this is uh, the issue with this thing. I posted a video a while back about uh, the Nage no Kata or the throwing form, about how it has all the essential gripping, gi and no gi, for you to do. And many people just started hammering the video. Uh, I do jujitsu drills in my jujitsu class. This is this stuff is just for show and it's useless and otherwise we would have, you know, whatever. While if you look at all the champions uh, in judo, even going up to someone like Gordon Ryan, all he does is rely on those fundamentals that are just readily available. Now, I do agree the teaching methodology of kata is terrible. Oh, you have an exam coming up to pass from first degree to second degree. Let's just train it in a couple of days. That's not how it works. I believe in Brazil they do something quite nice, uh, even colored belts, yellow and orange. Uh, to pass from belt to belt, you have to learn one throw of the nage no kata, and then the next belt is maybe two. Uh, this one also should be added for those belts because together they make what is called the randori no kata, so the te randori techniques. And uh, you should learn maintenance, escape, uh, proper execution of strangles and uh, joint locks, as well as uh, throwing techniques and all the various grips. And they should be discussed at length, not just, oh, do it like this move, one, two, three, and then you throw. No, they should know that uh, how to unbalance. That's what that's what we did in Kodokan. We had a very long weekend, and they escaped. Uh, they explained a lot of things. I wish that could be done almost weekly, like in Tokyo. But uh, I wasn't in Tokyo, so uh, if you have anything to add, let me know down below. Consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a member. This was Shadi, and thank you for listening.